In the second video, in respect to calibration, I will show you how you can do wiggle matching using Oxcal. And I will not go into a lot of details here. I will just simply show you how you can do wiggle matching. This is actually straightforward. The difficulty comes then when you actually work with real world data. And I have to admit, I have not so many practical experiences with that because I'm not so what often really doing wiggle matching for a specific dendrochronology. Um, so if you really want to work with this later, you should consult someone who has actual experience. But still, it might be helpful to you to get a basic idea how you can do that. And also, you can use this technique not only for doing wiggle matching with tree rings, but for example, if you have other external information about the relative distance of certain dates, you might also introduce that in this wiggle matching approach. Okay, again, I will show you that uh, how you can do that on with the graphical user interface using these dates here from the Miskovice side, although they don't come from any tree rings. At first, I have to insert a sequence. I have to make uh, or uh, say to Oxcal <laughs> that these dates are in a specific order. And since we have absolute distances between the individual uh, sites, it is a D sequence. You can look up the different sequences and what they mean in the Oxcar help, which I would encourage you to do anyway. But in that case, if we want to do wiggle matching, we use the D sequence. To insert this, again, I click on insert and I select from this huge po range of possibilities the D sequence here and I highlight the uh, specific point here that's that's empty and I s call that my sequence which is probably not the most elegant name but it will work for us. And now again I could go for the copy and paste approach but I will do that faster by going here in the code and selecting the code and put that inside of this curly brackets. And now we have this D sequence with all the dates and I assume they are now in the correct order. Um, and they are actually ordered from the oldest to the youngest, so it should work essentially well. So now we have the dates in the sequence. The main interesting addition that we need to do here is to um, specify what kind of gaps are between the dates. In a tree ring situation, that would be the count of tree rings between the individual sample location for the C14 dates. To introduce one of these gaps, I can select here from the insert the function gap. And here I have to specify how big the gap is. I go for 10 years. And you can also add an uncertainty for your gap. I'm totally certain because these are tree ring counts. So I just go for that. But you can also add here a value specifying the uncertainty if you would have some in years. So now I just introduced the gap here and again I could go for a copy paste approach but it's more straightforward if I go into the code and extract this command here and now I put that between all my dates because here I assume that every date has the same distance from each other. In the real world, you would probably have different counts of tree rings here. And so you would have to specify how many tree rings are between the dates, giving here as number of years in between. Now this model looks like that. So we have all the gaps in between our C14 dates. And now I can go for run. And this time it actually runs a bit longer than if we would just do the simple calibration, because here a bit of Bayesian statistics is already involved but it runs rather fast compared to more complicated stratigraphical models with which we come to later. We have here a poor agreement, which means this date here, it's very hard to really put that into this sequence here. Also for the last date, uh, it's very far away from all the other dates. So there's a little chance that this is actually really in this 10 year sequence. <coughs> in actual tree ring analysis, did should give you a warning sign. Uh, still, these are warnings, so this might still be the correct result. It just gives you an indication you have to really check your dates if this is um, correct or not. We can also look 
at the curve plot and see now our individual dates here and you can see that the probability range is very very much reduced from the um, straightforward calibration so because we impose this structure here on the dates it is very much um, limited or constrained you can see for example this date doesn't fit so well to the calibration curve and the last date also so this is um, the reflection of the fact that they do not fit into this general um, tree ring schedule and I can also look at the individual dates here and can see the individual probabilities and you can see that uh, the range has narrowed down in that case to 50 years with a 95% probability and here it's even sh shorter with 40 years and here also 40 years compared to the range of the unconstrained calibration you gain a lot of more precision if you know um, these distances between the two rings. That's why wiggle matching is so helpful in that case when you have the possibility to use it together with tree ring counts to come up with a very precise location and if you have more dates and uh, if uh, the dates actually fit better to the calibration curve you can get to a precision up to five years with that without actually doing dendrochronology so it's very very helpful tool if you have the right data for it